Hey, doing this is Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and in this episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the truth about reality TV, especially my personal reality TV experience that I had. And the show that I was on was sort of a wilderness survival show. It was a pilot, and um, it didn't really pan out. It didn't work out, and so it didn't really. I mean, they did technically air it, but um, they weren't going to. I think they just needed to fill in a time slot, so nobody really knew about it they didn't even tell us one of the guys who was on the show with me actually was watching tv and saw that it was coming up next and contacted us and so we you know we're like tuning in to check it out so anyway the first you know thing that i learned from the whole experience is they didn't do necessarily a good job of picking a good location for having uh this particular it was a survival based you know reality show and in order to, especially for a pilot where you're trying to get it to take off, you want to pick an area that's going to really be awesome, you know, and be able to produce something that's really going to catch the viewer's eye. Now, they recruited me to be on the show for my hunting. And I told them right off the bat, like when they contacted me, I said, hey, what's in season while you're trying to film this? Because I'm not going to be a poacher for you. You know what I mean? We have to have a legit hunting license and you know, do it by the books. And so the only things they were in season at the time were um, rabbit and a certain species or a ground squirrel or whatever. And um, rattlesnakes, we could get rattlesnakes. Which a couple of the guys did get a nice big rattlesnake and we ate it and it was awesome. Um, but anyway, I was brought on for the hunting aspect. And where they put us was on the edge of the desert and there wasn't any you know animals really to speak of they even set up trail cameras at one point because some of the guys set traps and they didn't get pictures of anything <laughs> because there wasn't really anything there so the point i'm trying to make is they uh they did a terrible job of picking location all right i'm firing up my gps because where i'm going is uh well you can see i'm in pretty deep in the woods here uh this is bear country so i got the bear pepper spray and a knife a lot of bear in here. You know, every time I hunted this area last year, I was seeing bear. I wasn't seeing deer, I was seeing bear. But anyway, when we first started out on this reality TV show, I was blindfolded at the hotel and driven for 45 minutes blindfolded to a location. And if you've ever seen the show Wipeout, there's like... Well, out there, this is in California, one of the things I learned is what they do out there is people like rent their land for a lot of these productions. And there was like this ranch that rents themselves out to all these different TV show productions. And one of them was, a show, there's a show called Wipeout. So I didn't know because I was blindfolded, but they drive us, we're sitting next to the Wipeout set in vehicles, waiting for all the other guys. And then they put us in this like four-wheeler type buggy and they're driving us all out through the woods. We're blindfolded. We don't know what's going on. And they, they did all this and, and did all these sh shot all these scenes over and over again right off the bat. And um, they never ended up using any of it, which was kind of funny because we were filmed for 16 hours a day for 20 days. And it, it was going to be a 45-minute episode in the, when it was all said and done. So it was like... The amount of footage that they took of us throughout the whole thing, they could have easily made it a whole series. And when you take that much footage, it's hard to boil it down and get the best stuff. And there was so much left out that was that should have been in there. Um, but that's just you know, one of the behind the scenes things. I'm just still waiting for my GPS to sync up to the satellites here before I really go back into this. You know, I'm on a hiking trail now, but I'm about to veer off into some real thick, nasty wilderness here. And um, the good thing is, although there's a lot of rattlesnakes in this region, there shouldn't be any in this particular area. It's not very rocky, but I got to keep an eye out for that. And one of the other things I really didn't expect with this whole thing, well, we didn't, we didn't know when we were going into it, what we were going to be up against. Um, and even the production people, they didn't know what they were doing. They kept asking us, like, what do you think about this? And what about this idea? Like, before we even started. And I was like, well, you know, you probably should do it like this or like that, you know, because they don't know anything about, a lot of these people, don't, they don't know anything about the outdoors. So anyway, we got on site eventually, and um, 
the first night uh, that you might not notice about me, but even though I'm a pretty big outdoorsman and all, and I've camped and fished and hunted my entire life, I never just f straight up f slept on the ground. Like, see all these leaves on the ground? Just like, I never raked up a pile of leaves and just slept in the leaves. Even though I went to wilderness survival school and everything um, for several weeks at a time at, and things like that, but I always slept in a tent, like on a sleeping bag. I didn't sleep on the ground. So the first night we just straight up slept on the ground like, okay, it's finally happening. But they never portrayed that. They made it seem like the first night we had already built a lean-to, which we didn't. Because we spent the first day just kind of scouting around, seeing what if there was any food sources around and things like that. So we didn't really build a shelter. It was interesting too, like the group of guys I was with, and here's something to think about when you're watching reality TV, like we really did get along pretty well. And we worked together really well as a team. Um, but that didn't really fit into the storyline that the production people wanted to portray. So they wanted us to get in arguments. They wanted us to, you know, hold things against each other just to create drama, which is unfortunate because, you know, the fact is humanity, people are a lot better than they're sometimes portrayed in these reality shows. And that's unfortunate because I think the world could use more of the positive message that's available. But um, people in media and production don't always want to do that because they think they'll get better ratings if people are always arguing and stuff. But uh, you know what? I disagree. I think a lot of us yearn for some peace and, um, and for to be able to see, you know, there's good people out there. And that makes me feel good about people. And I think more of us would benefit from that and appreciate that. Another thing that was, you know, I found interesting was even though I was trying to, you know, really be true to myself and um, not get into the whole thing about talking negatively about others just to create false drama for their production and all, I found that as time went on, I just started to wear out. You know, toward the end of the production, there was a couple times where I was so exhausted, I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I wish this guy would have done this instead of that. You know, I just kind of went on with it, along with it a little bit. It just wears you out. I think one of the things I found a little also discouraging with the whole thing is I, on Sundays, I led a prayer service. And throughout the first couple of weeks, everybody but one guy came. And, you know, it surprised me because especially the one guy, he, he was open that he's not interested in religion and things like that but he did it because he was a team player and he wanted to support the team you know solidarity and that's the thing about these guys that I was with they were just incredible guys and um, we all kind of supported each other in that way but they didn't portray that on the show but then getting into the last like two weekends or you know last two times we did Sunday service um, the one guy who hadn't been coming he showed up like halfway through the uh, the service and he stayed outside of the video shot because he, you know, didn't want to interrupt and whatever, but he was there. That's the point. He, he decided to come to be a part of the team, support the team. And in the very last week, he did come, even though he had his own sort of reservations and issues himself about um, religion uh, and didn't want to be a part of it. He came... You know, because he he's a team player. And, again, these are the types of things, I think, if they would have portrayed them, it, it's a good testament to people, you know, like people trying to work together and be positive. But that's, you know, in reality TV, a lot of times they're stuck on this storyline where they create drama and then usually have conflict resolution at the end. But I think if, if they more often portrayed actual reality... Like, hey, there's a lot of good people out there. And there's a lot of people who want to do good and be team players, you know. And a lot of times that's kind of left to the side with a lot of these productions, which is a shame. And that's why I'm saying it right here on this video, because, you know what? The only real reality TV is people like this YouTube channel right here. Like, you watch my videos, it's real. I'm not trying to create drama or be fake or anything. I'm just, I'm walking through the woods right now scouting for... You know, in the fall, even though it's 
it's barely not even June. Um, I want to do some scouting right now because I have a chance. And then I'll stay out of here. I might come back to uh, set up a trail camera and let it run for a month or two. But they're calling for thunderstorms today and tomorrow. Right now it's sunny, but it's supposed to be later today. So that's why I'm going right now. So that way it washes all my scent away and reduces the chance of me alerting the deer that I was here. Anyway, back to reality TV. I think those are some of the main things I wanted to say. And I've been trying to avoid saying too much else uh, because I don't want them to tell me I have to take this video down. I haven't really given anything away. I mean, the show that I was on, I was a little disappointed because a, a lot of the stuff I did wasn't portrayed. And I think um, largely because I didn't want to play the game. Like they wanted us to do fake arguments and I wouldn't do it. And so, you know, it's only 45 minutes of actual footage. And the sad thing is a lot of it was the fake arguments that they wanted us to get in, which I didn't participate in. And so I was left out of those scenes. I was left out of most of it, actually. So um, I was kind of glad that it didn't really go anywhere. But that's, um, that's something to think about. If you're thinking about trying to get on a reality TV show, too, um, <clears throat> a lot of them don't work out. I mean, we don't hear about a lot of them because they just don't go anywhere. And so you might get all excited to be on one. And just, just to let you know, I mean, it, it might not work out. Where, you know, even if it does, you might have a moment in the light, you know, like today. You're on a show now, but five years from now, nobody remembers it. Because there's so many constantly coming out and life is constantly changing. So, the perspective, uh, you know, expectations. You know, keep yourself in right expectations. If, uh, if God wants you to be famous or successful... It, it'll happen, but if he doesn't, it's it's not gonna. You know, I mean, those doors will ultimately close. You'll fade into the background. There's so many people that were famous years ago, and you never hear from them anymore. And you see stories of them all washed up and stuff. I mean, life is dynamic. You know, that's reality. Reality is, life is dynamic, and things are always changing. And we gotta adapt. We gotta adjust our lives and. The better we can adapt and change with it, the better off we are. And I think that's one of the biggest things. A lot of people resist change and are afraid of change. But the more you are accepting of change and willing to change, the better off you're going to be. I believe that 100%. And I believe in God 100%. And that's, those are some huge things. And wow, this is a great cross trail right here. Um, I'm going to stop and pull out the GPS to make sure I mark this because it's a good spot. I always look for major, major cross trails like this. And then I look for a good uh, vantage point for a setup. So like, let me just zoom up here. So that's actually in the woods. So it's very thick right there. It's very thick right there. But you see this, this trail going right there. And I just came walking up. This, this is a really good trail right here. So, you know, you got all these woods over here, but bang, right there. There's a trail and then this other one comes across. I call this an intersection, you know. When you're walking through the forest, like thick stuff, and all of a sudden you hit a big intersection, it's a major travel corridor that gives you an opportunity at a deer from multiple angles. So even if the wind's wrong and it's the deer on that side of you are getting spooked, you still got a shot at the deer come that might use the other trail. And so I like these types of spots. And here's a neat, like right up here in that pine tree right there, you can put a little hang on and be disguised right in that tree. And that's about a 18 yard shot to this major intersection. Has nothing to do with reality TV per se, but there's a little hunting tip for you. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna continue scouting. And uh, before I put the camera away, I wanna tell you, I'm gonna put a link in the description section of this video for the two other related videos I'm doing. One on the top things you might not have known about reality TV. And then also a behind the scenes of my experience with reality TV where I give you some of the video footage I took before and after my actual experience of being on that show. So I hope you'll click on those and check those out. Until next time, take care, God bless, and please like, subscribe, and share.